Right, YouTube, it's uh, Mike Six Charlie Tango Papa, aka Wow Sly. I've got a uh, two meters, two times two meters, uh, twenty-two millimeter overflow pipe. Um, I think it's eighty-four p for each one, and um, the twenty-two millimeter waste pipe is one pound something. And the last lot of 22 mil I bought, which is normal um, piping, was £2.50 a metre. So I thought I'd buy a couple. I only need a metre, so I've got four metres to play with. I've got a couple of end stop caps. Uh, there's two in there, and they just push fit straight on the end. Um, this is for the, uh, the two metre, the 145 megahertz. Uh, flower pot antenna I've seen on the internet. If you want to try it for a little while, you can make it out of RG58. You literally have uh, a bit of coax, nine turns, I think it is, and then your feeder. Um, so all I've got to do is drill a couple of holes, strip off a little bit of coax, um, <coughs> tape it to the end so it doesn't fall down, and then cap it off. Very simple antenna. There's obviously quite a little bit of flex there's going to be a lot of flexness, but uh, the flex there'll be less flex when it's cut in half. I think you need less than a metre. I can't quite remember the measurements. I'm going to look online now. Um, but there are methods where you can poke in um, the smaller pipe, which I was going to get, but really not necessary. Or you can buy um, a bit of wood and just push a little wood down there just to stop it from flexing so much. This is the most flexible piping you can buy for 84p for two meters but it's not going to be up on a mast at 90 mile an hour winds this is a uh, going to be for portable um could probably sling it up in a car sling it in the car and take it on the portable mast i've got on, on a good day but mainly it's going to go on my bike trailer um, you can take it on a backpack or um you know you can carry the thing it's not going to be any weight at all these things weigh nothing at all so yeah, great portable antenna, hopefully, touch wood. But uh, we're gonna turn the computer on now, have a cup of tea, jot a few notes down, and then head out to the shack and start chopping things up. Right, so there we are, roughly 25 millimeter. millimeter. Obviously this was um, planned and designed in the States in, the, in America. Uh, we don't have 25 mil. Uh, we have 18, 22, and 28 mil. We don't do 25. It says at the top, grey, um, like the plastic piping, even the grey stuff over here, I've just been up there, is not 25 minutes or 22 or 28. So anyway, I thought 28, 28 was too big, so I've got 22. Um, the other thing I was going to do with this is you don't have to use the piping. You can just heat seek it, heat seek it, heat shrink it, make it waterproof, and you could hang this from a tree. You could use it as a wire antenna. Obviously have, you know, about three inches of plastic pipe, for your uh, ugly barn, um, your choke, and then just hang it, hang the wire from a tree, or you know, out the window, or whatever, or attach it to a, you know, a fishing pole. Um, but I did hear talk about uh, a dual band version for two and seventy. Um, so anyway, these, these are the rough measurements. Um, I'm not going to put a link up or read them out. There are, you know, you just Google. Um, two meter flower pot antenna but yeah anyway i heard about um the jaw band version and the jaw band version is pretty much identical four seven four four seven four. yeah the jaw band antenna is identical apart from bang over the middle of where the um the antenna separates on the coax is a 235 millimeter aluminium sleeve which goes around the outside of the plastic tube. Um, as you can see, there's the middle of plastic sleeve. Just goes around it, and and that turns it to jaw band. I thought it'd be a lot more complicated than that. I didn't actually look for research here. I just thought, you know, I don't really use 70 cm. Um, I want it for two meters, and there it is. It says you can make it out of foil, kitchen foil, aluminium foil, brass shim copper foil um or the stuff you get in coax 
uh, the foil you get in the coax. You, this looks like the foil you get in the coax. You shouldn't use foil coax for this antenna. Apparently it breaks. Probably when you're doing the nine turns because of the diameter, it's quite small. Um, I think that the foil snaps. But you can use the foil for this. And it's literally um, 235 millimeter, just a sleeve that goes straight over the outside of the plastic piping. Um, oh, there you go, that's someone there, the heat, heat shrinking it to make it waterproof. I'm just going to use black tape because that's how we roll. Um, and that's it, that's dirt simple. I've heard so many people make about people say about making it, and it is simple and easy. And uh, that shocked me to turn that into a dual band. You literally have to put that tiny bit of foil over the outside of it. Right, anyway, I want to drink my brew and get back to it. I just uploaded a couple of photos on the Facebook, so while I'm making this video, we'll have a wee giggle, I have a little giggle of this. Um, portable today, I do a bit of a road trip. Where's he gone? Where's he gone? Go on, where's he gone? Where's he gone? Where's he gone? Check out my mobile installation for today. Yeah, two meters, seventy cm, dual band antenna. That's what I had on the rental car today. Look at that! Look at that for a beast. Whole six inches, if that. The mag mount's like an inch and a half. Look at it. Big gun station. That thing is literally the size of the handset. Right, there's the first pole and 94 millimeters down. I've just drilled an ang uh, a hole, which you can't see because of the flash. Okay, there you go, just drilled a hole, but uh, drilled it on an angle. So I haven't got too much of an angle on the coax. Right, and the first bit of the antenna has been done. It's 457 millimeters. Um, of the plastic shielding and the outer coax, the braid has been removed. I think it was 400. And I can't remember now. Measurements on my phone, and I'm using my phone to video. Um, so then I'm going to do the second part, make a mark, feed it in for the pipe, and then do the nine turns. All right, with the tailor's tape measure, because it's uh, a bit more flexible first bit was removed 457 and now we've put a mark at the 447 part bit of black tape so we know how much to feed into the plastic pole so we don't go past the top of that tape and then that will be the antenna well without the nine turns see with the nine turns you could just hang that from a tree right with a little bit of tape I've just taped up the end of the uh, antenna just to stop it from falling back down and the end cap can go straight on there and uh, now I can get on with the nine nine turns and then drill a hole straight through and feed the coax through at the bottom right now I've just done nine turns I'm going to mark on the plastic to pipe where it finishes unravel it all and then drill straight through both sides of the pipe right so the hole for the bottom of the uh, nine turns is now drilled most people drill one hole on this side on an angle and feed the coax back down through the plastic pipe but I'm gonna feed mine straight through and then down that straight down that side no reason why um, no idea why I think I did have a reason earlier but I'm not too sure now anyway right let's do the nine turns and then feed that through all right, there's my nine turns. I'm just gonna uh, try and pinch it all up as tight as possible and then wrap it up in good old electrical tape. Right, it's all wrapped up now. And a little tip for wrapping up things like this. Obviously, this is the top. Um, you don't wanna start wrapping the tape up here and working your way down. Water will get in through the overlaps. So uh, what I've done is I've done two layers. So I started at the top, uh, which you shouldn't really do. Um, but I counteract that by winding all the way down with the coax and then 
when I got to the bottom, I round back up again. So all my um, folds were like roof tiles overlapping. Nice and clean cut, good seal at the top. So now any lines, water can't get in by running down. Um, the only way water will get in there is by running up and it won't happen. So now I'm gonna mark off um, the middle section and add the aluminium um, cover. And what I'm gonna use for this is I've got this old exhaust bandage. Just to put a bandage on a, on a back box, a silence of a car. I'm gonna cut off what I need from there, attach it to the middle, and then wrap that up in black tape the same way. Right, not that we can see that. But uh, I've got my 235 millimeters of kitchen foil. I used the uh, aluminum foil, kitchen foil. I had uh, the metal bracket I was gonna use originally was just too thick to bend around such a small diameter pipe. So the 235 mil um, has been taped on the same method, taped upwards, just on one layer. And that's 345 millimeters from the top. So the start of it, and then it's all taped up there. And then the bottom of the antenna, and I've cut off, left myself eight inches to play with. I was going to do six, but I thought I'd go for eight. So I've got eight inches to attach it to a pole, slot it over another pole. Um, the choke's all taped up. So now all that's left to do is to put the end stop cap at the top. And there we go. The, uh, the end stop just slipped on there very easily. Um, can't be pulled off. Uh, can be pulled off it's not a perfect fit it's just something to keep the water out you could black tape it on there use a bit of black tape um, but that's it all done let's see if we can stand it up for a full view there we go i can stand back a little bit um, looks a lot taller than it actually is on camera and there's the base of the antenna the middle section that makes it dual band and then the tip of the antenna we'll get a tape measure out now and measure it um, so we can get a rough idea of what we got Right, it's half wave antenna with the eight inches I've left at the bottom. Well, roughly eight inches. I measured six, then added a few more. Um, and probably an extra couple of millimeters on top for the uh, end stop. It's 46 inches long, that's 117, 118 centimeters. So 46, just over a meter basically, just over a meter long. Might be classed as a bit long for most people for portable, but there's no weight to that at all. It's very, very light. Again, there's a bit of flex in there, but um, you know, it's not for gale force winds, it's just for something light for portable. So that's how we make a dual band, um, two meters and 70 cm flower pot antenna for about five pound. Thanks for watching YouTube. I'll test it on another day. I've just found out I've got no more connectors. Um, so I'm going to have to order some. Oh, hang on. No, I haven't. I thought I had one there. <laughs> it's a SL2 to uh, BNC. Is it BNC to screw one? No, BNC is the push and twist. No, I've got no more, uh, no more plugs. I've got to order some plugs before I try it out. But right, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully... Um, give some people ideas to build either the, uh, the two meter version or the dual band version um, depending on what my SWR is like but again I'll, I'll try it out another day a bit push for time today and um, yeah I've got to order some plugs and some connectors for the end of it right thanks for watching there's my uh, dual band antenna I made a while ago telescopic components so I can adjust it to the size I need that fits on the end of a uh, the mini mast I've got and I can just adjust those to the height I need or length I need
depending on what frequency you're using. So yeah, that's going to replace that. That is a lot smaller and compact. That fits in a laptop bag nicely with the radios. How much charge we got? We've got 13 volts coming in, and the battery's at 12.7. Oh yeah. 